What's going on guys? Always great to see you. So I'm going to go over what happened this week, giving an update on Scam Sam's trial of his life, essentially. The man is facing over a hundred years behind the slammer. And I guess the jail diet basically is working for Scam Sam. It certainly was a little too big for being a vegan. So then after all the hoopla with the jurors, they started on Wednesday. Prosecutors opened the case with basically talking and explaining Scam Sam riding high, accumulating billions of dollars, living in a $30 million penthouse in the Bahamas, telling the jurors that's where he was running his FTX empire from. With the opening statement saying he jetted around the world in private planes, hung out with celebrities like Tom Brady, Bill Clinton, while at the same time gracing magazine covers, of course, like a celebrity himself, with wealth, power, and massive, massive influence, all <laughs> built on lies. Then saying that Sam Bankman-Fried was using his company FTX to commit fraud on a massive scale and the money he was spending to build his massive empire and of course his wealth was all FTX customer money. Summing it up simplistically saying while the defendant told customers they could deposit money and FTX would keep it safe. In reality, he was taking those deposits and spending them on himself. Prosecutors pointing out the lavish portfolio, the real estate portfolio that he would spend on himself, his parents, and even his friends, executives. On top of that, he purchased basically celebrity friends like Tom Brady and even gaining loads of political influence by of course donating to politicians, which are just another form of paid celebrities, you know? Ending the opening statement by saying customers tried to get their money back after the truth started to come out. When customers tried to access their money, well, it was gone because Sam Bankman had taken it, saying FTX collapsed and customers were left with billions and billions and billions of dollars in losses. And that's why they're in the courtroom. So the defense opening statement, Scam Sam's lawyer, Mark Cohen, said he didn't intend to defraud anyone. He was always acting in good faith. Of course, we expect that. He said the prosecutors are making Scam Sam look like almost a cartoon villain, saying that Scam Sam was simply a math nerd, that he studied at MIT before joining a firm at Wall Street, trying to paint him like this innocent boy. The defense lawyer said that FTX was being run similar to building a plane while you're flying it because FTX was a startup, even though it had already been running for years. So that's interesting there. It did say that some things did get overlooked like proper risk management, but nonetheless, they were still building the plane while they were flying, flying into a perfect storm which was out of their control. The defense lawyer mocked the prosecutors for bringing up the real estate portfolio that Scam Sam and his family had amassed, basically saying that they're trying to make him look like a bad guy because of this. He said they're doing this because that's what bad guys do. When in fact, the FTX crypto exchange was just trying to attract talent from either Google or Facebook. Seems like a very easy excuse. Going as far as kind of mocking the opening statement by the prosecutor saying that, hey, it's okay to use and to hire Tom Brady for an advertisement. And then mocking the witnesses that were about to take the stand, saying that these people agreed to the decisions at the time, whether by Scam Sam or FTX company, but are now, only now claiming that Scam Sam did this in a sinister and deceitful way, only now after, of course, they all cut deals with the prosecutors to try to save their own booty. And what the hell, that's, that's a fair point by the defense lawyers. So let's give them that, right? Anyways, this real estate portfolio that they amassed was pretty large. Just in the Bahamas alone, it was worth nearly $300 million, not just for Scamp Sam, but also his crooked parents. So of all the people that could be the very first witness, this guy just happens to be it. To me, it makes no sense why him. This guy lost about $100,000. He's a French commodities broker, so he should know better. Marc Antoine Julliard. Now, I don't think this guy was a strong first witness because of the things he said. He almost sounds like a buffoon. In court, he testified that he saw an advertisement with the model Giselle Bunchen, Giselle Bunken, and it made him feel confident in FTX. Apparently, Giselle convinced this guy that FTX had strong financials because she was in it. Just doesn't make any sense. He said he was impressed by that. And also that FTX had put up advertisements during the Super Bowl. So if you ever have doubts that these stupid advertisements actually work, there's perfect proof right there. $100,000 because Giselle Bunken made this guy feel good.
So good looking celebrities do work apparently. The fellow went on to say he was further impressed with Scam Sam because he saw him on stage with Tony Blair, former Prime Minister of England, and Bill Clinton, which in his views and many other people's views would help to build faith in the company. Then he went on to say that he tried to withdraw his money back last year, November last year, just as the whole thing came crashing down. He saw tweets from Scam Sam and FTX that the money was safe, that the assets are fine, FTX is fine, and apparently this reassured him that the money was safe. Well, I don't know about that one. So that was that. He lost his money, couldn't get it out. He was basically... The next guy was Adam Yadida. Yadidia. Pictured here, walking into court. This guy was probably one of the smart ones. He worked at FTX as a software developer up until the collapse, then he quit. He bailed. When he found out that Alameda Research was, was funneling money from FTX, and that's how they were paying the creditors. He saw this as a huge, well, problem, of course. Smart guy. Also a smart guy because he made an immunity deal with the prosecutors that nothing that he says could be used against him, of course, claiming that maybe he had inadvertently written something into code that could potentially, potentially be used in criminal activities. Maybe, well, if he was part of the team writing this stuff into code, potentially being used for criminal activity, well, that makes a lot of sense. He cut a deal with the prosecutors. And this guy was a close friend of Scam Sam. They met each other at MIT, calling him a close friend. And funny enough, the jurors were shown a bunch of commercials that FTX was, you know, known to have, featuring Tom Brady, Larry David, a bunch of other celebrities, Shaquille O'Neal, with one of the commercials describing people at FTX as visionaries, where FTX is a place where investing and ethics come together to meet. <laughs> oh man, scam freaking Sam. Just can't make this up. Then Adam Yadidia on Thursday, he testified that those living on the property in the Bahamas, right? Costing upwards of 30, $35 million, this crazy penthouse. Anyways, he said that Scam Sam was charging everyone there rent. Rent of upwards of $15,000 per month. Insane. So how much were they getting paid from Scam Sam? But either way, Scam Sam was clawing back from each one. $15,000 per month. And it makes no sense because supposedly Scamp Sam owned the penthouse outright. So maybe they were not close friends after all. I mean, I wouldn't charge my close friend $15,000 per month when I own the place and supposedly I'm a billionaire. Bizarre, bizarre. Adam Yadidia revealed some relationship advice he gave to Scamp Sam concerning our favorite, Caroline Ellison who will be testifying next week. Apparently Adam gave the advice to Scam Sam that they should not date, despite them, you know, sleeping together. On top of that, he said there was a computer bug, maybe done on purpose, that showed FTX holding debts of up to $16 billion. The bug made it look like Alameda owed FTX $16 billion instead of the $8 billion. So some kind of funny business there. So after he saw this bug, after he fixed this error, he went up to Scam Sam, he had a bit of a chat during table tennis, and basically he had to ask Scam Sam if they were okay. With Sam saying something like, we're not bulletproof this year. Interesting wording. With Sam saying it would take maybe six months to three years to become bulletproof again, but Adam went on to say that he was looking a little anxious, a little nervous, of course, because probably Scam Sam knew what the hell was coming. Anyways, this 30, $35 million penthouse was introduced by the prosecutors as kind of evidence highlighting the lavish lifestyle that Scam Sam and all the buddies that he was charging rent, the, the kind of lifestyle they were leading with eight of his college friends living there, plus Caroline Allison. Of course, this does include Gary Wang, and Nishad Singh. And just to show how fancy this Bahamas real estate is, Justin Timberlake and even Tiger Woods have a place there. So, big bucks. Next up was Gary Wang. This guy said that there was a spreadsheet showing basically, oops, he's also a big star witness for the prosecution. Big deal. Also important to note that Gary Wang did plead guilty. He pleaded guilty to wire fraud, committees fraud, securities fraud, and is of course testifying against Scam Sam to try to get a linear sentence himself. He was brought to court by, I'm assuming his lawyer, in a car. So, so he doesn't seem to be doing so bad. Anyways, in a big blow to Mr. F Job Scam Sam, Gary Wang <laughs> told the court, told the jurors, that the scammery had been going on for three years. That's a very long time. Telling the court that Alameda Research had a line of credit with FTX with virtually no limit 
to how much money borrow, take out, an approved line of credit of $65 billion. It's a lot of money. Going on to say that in 2019, that's when Gary Wang started to notice all the funny business because he could see the Alameda research had a negative balance, meaning money was taken out from FTX, it was owed to FTX. Gary Wang bringing this up to Scam Sam and Scam Sam saying that as long as the balance was lower than what FTX revenue was, the trading revenue, that things were okay. Nothing to worry about. By late 2019 to 2020, this Alameda debt, this line of credit, had ballooned, spiraled basically out of control, according to Gary Wang. And he can see all of this happening probably in real time. And here's the kicker. When the prosecutor asked Gary Wang, what's the implication, what's the meaning of Alameda Research having a negative balance in excess of FTX revenue? Wang, Gary Wang, he said it meant Alameda was taking money, taking money from customers. Telling the court that after he brought this up to Scam Sam, Scam Sam told him and directed him to include the value of FTT in his calculations. FTX token, FTX crypto token, which of course they were printing, they were minting out of thin air. Fake money, fake crypto money, fake Ponzi scheme crypto money. Gary Wang saying the FTT token was of course crypto money worth a few bucks that FTX had created itself, but this was problematic. Now remember that last year Binance had actually liquidated all of FTT token because they didn't trust FTX and, and that kind of triggered the whole house of cards to basically collapse. Anyways, back to Gary Wang. He said the reason why it was problematic was because FTT, if it's sold off, if all that FTT token was sold off, it would cause the price to drop. Makes sense. And if the price dropped, well, it can't cover Alameda's debt. Also makes sense. Hence, when this news kind of came out, became known, became kind of semi-public in November, 2022, it caused the whole, it caused the whole bank run, crypto run, collapse. Anyways, Gary Wang said he just left it at that. He couldn't do anything about it. He trusted Scamp Sam to do his crypto magic. And by late 2021, Gary Wang said that Alameda Research, their debt, their line of credit had reached $3 billion. That's how much money had been taken out. Saying that Alameda's debt combined with the value of FTX trading and the value of the FTT token, all that combined was easily exceeded by the debt. Prosecutor point blank asked Gary Wang, do you believe FTX or Alameda was allowed to use or spend customer money? Wang said no, saying the money belonged to customers and they never got permission. Of course, court learned that in July 31st, 2019, the same day, the same day that Scam Sam had asked for Alameda to be allowed to have this giant negative balance credit line, allowing it to borrow infinite amount of money, well, upwards of $65 billion, effectively infinite money. He tweeted, he tweeted out that everything was fine at FTX, at the company. So simply stated, the prosecutor's asking Gary Wang point blank, when Alameda withdrew money below its zero balance from FTX, where did the money come from? Point blank, with Gary Wang saying it was customer money. It was FTX customer money. Psh, oh man, oh man, poor Scamp Sam. I mean, with a testimony like that, super, super f***ed. Gary Wang adding that no other company, no other customer, no other user, except for Alameda, which Scam Sam was of course owner, that no other company could have a negative balance. He said this whole thing was set up by Sam Bankman Free to pay for certain expenses that Alameda Research had. Expenses like the penthouse, his parents' real estate portfolio, and many other nice things. Oh man, Scam Sam is so screwed. <laughs> Anyways, Gary Wang said that on top of that, a bunch of losses worth hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars were put on Alameda Research on their books. The reason why is because FTX, FTX balance sheets are more public than Alameda. That Alameda Research, their balance sheets were way, way more secretive. Therefore, it could be hidden. Ah, makes sense. And that was said by Scam Sam, according to Gary Wang, that big shot investors could see the balance sheets being held by FTX, but they couldn't see Alameda Research's balance sheets. Gary Wang said a bunch of explosive stuff, 
pretty impressive actually. He was a good witness. He said that in 2022, in September 2022, Scam Sam threw out the idea, raised the idea of maybe shutting down Alameda, notably because of a Bloomberg article. Apparently some people, word was getting out that things were a little bit too commingled with Alameda and FTX. Apparently Scam Sam drew up a Google document describing arguments for shutting down Alameda and this document was shown to the court, principally blaming Caroline Allison. Poor Caroline Allison. And that by this time, roughly September 2022, Alameda Research owed FTX upwards of $14 billion, much of it customer money. Absolutely insane. By November, during the collapse in 2022, Gary Wang said that while checking the company's balances, he was surprised to see that despite the bank run, the crypto run, balances were equaling out, meaning how much money was in FTX wallets bought, held by customers and how much money was in FTX. So something funny was going on. He said that Scamp Sam had asked to include Korean accounts from some friendly people. Apparently it was accounts with balances, potentially fake, made to look like things were in proper order. An account changed from Alameda, a sub account, made to look like the balances all equaled out and that Alameda was making its payments to FTX. I would love to see a picture or a video of Scam Sam's face while Gary Wang is laying all this info out. Absolutely explosive, absolutely explosive. Wang said that the day after FTX filed for bankruptcy, back in November, the day after FTX declared bankruptcy, Scam Sam tried to stop funds being transferred to a lawyer, that he tried to stop the FTX assets being transferred to the lawyer that had been given permission to basically put the company back in order, at least to investigate what the hell is going on. Gary Wang specifically said that Scam Sam told him to stall the whole thing. Ouch, absolutely explosive. And supposedly the reason why is because Scam Sam thought that the assets being held or controlled in the Bahamas were safer. They were more friendly towards him. He did, after all, offer to pay the national debt of the Bahamas. So, well, there is that. It's funny when you play with money. It buys you a lot of favors, huh? Especially if you can print money out of thin air. The prosecutors were not messing around in their wording. Asking Gary Wang, did you commit crimes at FTX? Gary Wang sharply, sharply said yes. With Nishad Singh, Caroline Ellison, and of course, Scam Sam. So Gary Wang, gotta give it to the guy. He admitted very, very clearly and laid out that all these special privileges given to Scam Sam Alameda Research were essentially embedded in the code, the code used to access customer funds. On top of this, of course, Gary Wang is basically also saying that despite owning a supposed 17% ownership stake in FTX, despite having that level of power at the company, that all matters eventually were solved simply by bowing down to Sam Bankman Fried's wishes. Pretty interesting. So next week will be even better with Caroline Ellison. Gary Wang could still be called. Well, that's the update, guys. Pretty insane, pretty explosive stuff from Gary Wang. Still wish we had pictures or video. Would be, <laughs> would be epic. Would be super, super epic. We'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for that. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for spending time with me. Always enjoyable. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching again. Smash the like if you haven't. Please do subscribe if you haven't. I will see you in the next one. Maybe.